Well, good afternoon to you. This is the Central Florida Computer Society and Sarasota Technology Users Group Windows SIG or WinSIG for Sunday, September 11th, 2022. You'll notice the change. We have now combined uh, the Windows SIG for two groups, one in Sarasota, one in Orlando. And uh, we're now on the air for Sunday, September 11th. And welcome. I'm Huey Poplock, and uh, you're not, but you're here, and I'm glad you're here. We've got a good uh, crowd to begin with. Just a reminder, at the end of this meeting, at around 2.45, we'll have a short break, and then the main Central Florida Computer Society is on the same link, and it'll be a, a presentation uh, uh, as, uh, about Android phones and just phones in general and how to set your phone up so you don't get robocalls. So that's going to be a good uh, presentation directly after the Windows SIG. But we've got a, a lot of topics to cover today. And uh, so uh, I think uh, I don't have any other announcements except don't forget tomorrow is Tech for Seniors uh, at uh, nine o'clock Pacific time, noon, uh, real time, Eastern time. And uh, we'd like to have you join us and uh, you can get more information and a link to it. I'm sure Ron will put a link into our page, but it's www.techforseniors.com. And uh, there's information and a link to the meeting. And with that, let's get started with the uh, Windows SIG for today. And let's see, we're going to open this up. And I am going to come up here. And I have an app that's called, or not an app, but an add-on. And it's called Open Multiple URLs. I've put all the URLs for today in that. And all I have to do is say Open URLs, and it will open all of them. And you can see along the top, they're all opening at the same time. So I can close that. And while that's getting started, let's go ahead and go to to my website. And to find out what we're going to cover, Every week, uh, you can go to the WinSig page on Huey.net, and I put in the topics that I think might be interesting in some kind of an order, and we just start at the top and go as far down as we can. Now, for those of you who receive, and, and if you don't, you should sign up for it, the uh, monthly WinSig newsletter, uh, I do list what I'm going to uh, cover and I'm sending it out earlier because I need to have it before the main uh, presentation meeting of STUG now that we've added them into the group. And so it goes out a little bit earlier. And so sometimes what will be listed that day may be added to later on uh, before the meeting. So you may see some newer items if you ju just check that day. Anyway, these are the articles. They're all loaded now. You can see at the uh, top in one fell swoop, that's all It's all done. And so we can go to each of the articles. The first one is 10 little known features that will blow your mind about Windows. And, and I think some of these are Windows 10, some are 11, and some are both. So let's uh, take a look at this article and what we did. And you know what? I have a problem here because my menu, I got to figure out how to move this menu over. Yeah, that just will move out of the way. Good. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to enter the immersive view. And then we're going to tell it we want text and we want it. Uh, oh, now I move that out of the way. Now it's in the way. And we'll make it larger. So even if you've been using Windows for decades, uh, it's big and complex enough where there might be features you can still that'll still surprise you. One of them is the mouse hover window activation. 
Now, I don't do this because I, it would be opening things up too, much too quickly for me. But according to this article, whenever I use a new PC, this is the very first feature he enables. Uh, technically, it's part of the accessibility tools, but many users might find it useful no matter what their level of mobility. The setting allows you to activate a window simply by moving your mouse cursor over it. To me, that's dangerous. Uh, it would open up things sometimes that I, I don't want to open. It's a tiny change, but if it's something that you like, that's something you might want to consider. To change the setting, setting, go to control panel. And I don't know whether most of you know, usually you press on settings. When you click on settings, it I can't, I could not find where to do this. So you actually have to go to control panel. What to get the control panel is you open up your start button and just type in control. And you know what? It shows up. It's still there. When you click it, it gives you the old control panel. And then what it says, so uh, let's see. Uh, then go to the ease of access center, which is here. And then uh, make it easier to manage windows. Let's see. In case you're interested, I did make a video on this. It's on my YouTube channel. Oh, did you? Good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, act, let's see. Make the mouse easier to use is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Which right here. And then you want to come down here where it says, make it easier to manage windows. And you can activate a window by hovering over it with the mouse. You just click that to turn it on. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to have that on my system, but that's how you turn this on if you want to play with it on your system. And you can watch Bob's video on it as well to have a better understanding. Okay, easy window arrangement is the next item in this article. Uh, with the newer versions of Windows, it's easier to move windows, and I don't know why you put the word sorry in there, uh, around your screen. Hold down the Windows key on your keyboard and then press the arrow key uh, to ins instantly move a window to the corresponding half of the screen. So, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways. And if you go to open a window in Windows 11, you'll see up in the top right hand corner, whoops, you'll see in the top right hand corner when I put my mouse over what is normally just to uh, uh, full screen your your window, you can get it set up so you can have either side by side, uh, two thirds and one third uh, into thirds, into a, uh, a half and then two quarters, four quarters and uh, two, uh, two quarters and a, and a half a screen in the middle. So you can set it up in different ways and have different windows on, on your desktop in different positions. And then you can adjust them accordingly as well. Uh, quick taskbar launch. If you're not used to this, uh, it, it's, it's a nice little trick. I have my icons at the bottom. It doesn't count a couple of them. So I have found that if I, uh, if I hit uh, Windows 3, it's opening my Brave. So the, th the third one across. So this is one, two, three four, five. So if I, if I want to open up everything on my machine, if I remember that it's five, if I hit the Windows key in five, it opens up my everything. So it's a fast way, I guess, to open anything. To me, going to the bottom and clicking this is a lot quicker and easier, but to each his own. Uh, rearrange your system tray. Uh, the system tray is down at the bottom, and that's a little up arrow. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not on my screen. When I click it, I got a lot of items there. But if I wanted to, I could take this, and I can move it over there, and I can move it back. So you can move these around if they're not in any particular order, and you would like to have certain ones to say at the top, you can do that. So having that in your system tray and being able to rearrange them so you can find quickly the ones that you're looking for. 
uh, is not a bad idea. Uh, the night light I don't use. I can't demonstrate it because it only it only affects my monitor, and I can't change it for yours. But it does make a a, a different color light on your monitor to set up your night light. You might want to experiment with it before you uh, turn it on and have it uh, set for certain hours every day. Uh, but if you use it at night, it does a uh, accommodate so it's not quite as bright at night as it is during the day. Supposed to help you get to sleep easier at night if you use it. Well, usually I just turn my monitors off. That solves that problem. <laughs> um, instantly bring up task manager. Now, some of you probably never have brought up task manager and others of you check it quite often. But if you want to bring it up, there is a uh, a, a set of key strokes that you can do to bring it up immediately. So you don't have to go looking for, for it. You don't have to open up any menus or not. Just click control, shift, and escape. So I'm going to hit sh control, shift, and escape. And there it is. And so that's how easy it is to open up task manager. And now my menu, I moved my menu around, and now my menu is covering it. There we go. Well, I full screened it, and I want to close it. And then screen, there's some screenshot tricks in this article, and it talks about the snipping tool. Oh, excuse me. If you don't use a snipping tool, uh, now I use something called Snagit, so I don't use a snipping tool. But if you, if you don't have any tool, to, to get screen captures, what you want to do is uh, use the snipping tool, and it's Windows Shift S. So if I hit Windows Shift S, there is my snipping tool toolbar, and I can get a rectangular shift uh, snip, a uh, freeform snip, uh, a Windows snip, and a full screen snip. So the, the free form, what you can do there is you can actually do just a, a small piece of, of screen uh, in any kind of a shape. So when you then open up, uh, let me just open up a, a word pad because it'll show uh, what we just did. And if I do a control V, there is what I just snipped. So if, if you ever need screen captures and want them real quick, uh, use the snipping tool that's part of Windows, unless you're using a, a, another tool, which is which I do. I use a, one that I purchased called Snagit, which uh, happens to be a very robust program. Uh, search by most recently installed programs. Uh, again, this is something I don't do because to me it gets in the way. I want to find what I'm looking for. I don't care if it's something recent or not uh, because at different times I want to use something uh, for, the, for a different purpose. So uh, one of the uh, smallest changes in Windows, uh, let's see, uh, press the Windows key, search for add or remove programs, click to open settings, the settings menu, you'll be presented with a list of every program installed on your computer. In previous versions of Windows, you'd have to hunt through this long list alphabetically. Now you can search for it, but if it's uh, not listed under the same name, excuse me, uh, click name and then install date. So let's see, it's saying to uh, uh, press the Windows key and then add I think it's just the search key. And uh, all right. you'll see here, my rec I have some recent ones listed right here. But you can search for anything you want. So if I wanted to look for Zoom, bingo, it comes right up. OK. Adjust text and element sizes. I don't do this, uh, but so I, I, I was helping somebody on their computer, and I noticed that they uh, had everything in larger icons and 
in larger fonts so they could read it. They didn't have as much information on the screen that I like to have, but uh, it was good for them. So uh, you can do some custom scaling. You can set up your, your icons on your screen, uh, on your desktop to be larger if you want. There's a lot of things you can do if you have trouble seeing what's on the screen. Uh, there are some things that you can change. Uh, quickly adjust uh, icon sizes in Explorer. And I think that's the end of that article. So we'll close that. I think you skipped one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Quickly connect to new screens. Yeah. If you've got more than one screen or you're using a projector, uh, this shows you how you can get to it. And uh, most of the time, Windows will automatically enable a new monitor or screen when you plug it in. But if it doesn't, here's a quick way to adjust your screen. Just do a Windows P to open the project menu or project menu. And from this pop-up, you can select duplicate. So if I do a uh, Windows, what is it, Windows P? And, and it's over here on the side. I can add the PC screen only. I can duplicate, I can extend it, and I can have it just to the second screen only because I have a second screen uh, right to the right of my main screen. The one, the one I am sharing with you is uh, I have a second screen. And when I use a projector, you use this and you can, uh, you'll have the projector, you'll have the projector as a screen and you can tell it to duplicate what's on your screen so that people will see what's on your screen up, up on the projector. Thanks for catching that. I didn't want to miss that one. Okay, this next uh, two new power tools. I'm going to stop that for a moment. Uh, I put this together for tomorrow's uh, Tech for Senior show, but I thought it was one that uh, you might get some information on. And there's a couple of things I want to talk about after it, but I'm not going to show it from YouTube. Uh, the link is on the page. But what I am going to do is I'm going to stop the share first and see if are there any comments, questions, but anything I've talked about so far or anything else before we continue. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to share my screen. I'm going to do it a little bit different this time. Tell it just the video, optimize for the video clip, share. Make sure I got the right file. Two new power toys, text extractor and screen ruler. I'm Huey Poplock. Two new additions to power toys are screen ruler, which is a quick and easy way to measure pixels on your screen, and text extractor, which is a convenient way to copy text from anywhere on the screen. Microsoft Power Tools is a set of utilities for power users to tune and streamline their Windows experience for greater productivity. Made by Microsoft and the Power Toys community. The Microsoft Power Toys were originally developed by Microsoft Research and released in 1998 as a way to demonstrate the power of Windows. Here is a list of the Power Toys. Some examples of these tools are Color Picker, which is a system-wide color selection tool for Windows that enables you to pick colors from any currently running application and automatically copies it in a configurable format to your clipboard and image resizer, which is a Windows shell extension for simple bulk image resizing. Here are the two new additions to Power Toys, Screen Ruler, and Text Extractor. Let's do the demo. Let's take a look at Screen Ruler. Now, you might ask, why do you need a screen ruler? One is you might want to know what size a certain picture is, a space on a, on a document. Uh, there are a number of reasons you might want to know what, how many pixels up and down or how long something is, how much space is between uh, one line and another. Uh, so there's a lot of 
reasons you might want to have a ruler. And let's take a look at a, at a couple uses of the ruler. You'll see at the top, I've already clicked on the Windows Shift M keys combination. And that combination opens up the menu for your screen ruler. This is the menu up here at the top. Now I had a little bit of a problem uh, when I was going to make this video that sometimes it came up and sometimes it didn't. I had to reboot a few times. I don't know whether it's a bug in the program or if I have some kind of a conflict. But either way, I've got it working. We'll take a look at it. So we have a picture here. We can do several things with this ruler. We can just check on the bounds of something, the spacing, horizontal spacing, vertical spacing, and the X shuts it off. Let's take a look. Let's do the boundaries first. This is an on-off switch, so once you turn it on, it stays on until you click it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to the corner of this picture on this website, and I'm going to click and drag it down to the bottom part. It tells me it's 715 by 400. When I let go of it, that goes away, but I don't know if you heard the pop or not. That's a signal on my system that uh, I copied something. So it puts it in the clipboard. So if I come over here, I've got Notepad open so we can look to see what I capture. So turn that off and then come over here and we're going to paste and it's saying it's 715 by 400. So it measured that and then saved the measurement in the clipboard. You can measure anything you want. Uh, if you're doing the border, you could say, oh, I wonder how big this little box is. And let's see. And we've got to shut that off. Then we come down here. Let's go to the next line and do a paste. And it's 291 by 125. So you can measure the size of something. All right, let's take a look at a Word document. When recording this, I noticed that when I go to the other spacing, horizontal spacing, and vertical spacing, I see a red line when I do that. So let's just look here. And I've got a, I see a red line on here, but I think when I click that, you will not see that. And so... I am going to skip this area, but you see what those three things will do. Now, what else could you do? Well, let's say you want to put a picture in your Word document, and you want to have it on the side of, let's say, uh, these three paragraphs. So you could say, okay, let's uh, do the spacing here, and let's say we want it from here, and we want the picture to be about that much wide for the er, next to those three paragraphs we let go of it then we can look over here which you got to shut that off come down here and so we're going to look to put a picture in that is going to be 331 by 235 so somewhere around 330 across and 235 uh, above we want to keep it in the right proportion so it depends on what our picture is but we know that we want to keep it about 235 uh, up and down and then if it's a little bit more than 333 it'll just bring it over to the side of the page so you can use this to measure anything you want and that's how to measure things on your screen for whatever reason you want to have them measured you can now another another thing you might want to do is measure a particular window if you're doing screen captures and you're going to leave it and come back you want to know how big that window is you might want to uh, get the measurements of that window and then you'll have the same size window when you start up the next time to continue the screen captures that you were doing for that particular presentation that you were going to be doing of the two new power toys the one i'm excited about is text extractor and it's one you'll probably find more, much more uses than uh, the other. So let's take a look at a Facebook page. And sometimes you go to a Facebook page and you see a, it's a picture of something that's got words on it. 
in order to bring up the text extractor you do a Windows shift and T for text it grays the screen and then you outline what you want the text to show you heard the pop that means it went into the clipboard I come over here and I'm just going to paste and now I have that text as text that I can do anything I want. I can edit it, make a paragraph out of it, whatever I want to do with it. So there's lots of uses for this. Let's look at another use. All of your files that are in a particular folder. If I do the Windows Shift T for text again, and I want to grab just the file names of what's there now I come over here let's clear this and I'm going to now right mouse click and paste and there are all of the file names listed there that are editable I can move them around I can put them in something alphabetize them whatever I want to do which I think is is, is a really good use of it Another might be, let's take one of these articles that's here, and uh, uh, let's take this as a JPEG. And here's an article that was from an old newspaper. It's not real clear because it's, it's it was taken from uh, an old newspaper from uh, many years ago. But let's go ahead. Windows Shift T. It grays it out. We're going to say, okay, we want to grab all of this information right here we come over to our notepad it could be word or whatever you want to whatever program you want to put it in and then you just tell it paste it and there's that whole article and it does a pretty good job of turning it into text you might have to go back in and edit a few things but for the most part it does capture it considering that's not a really good thing to copy uh, that same article was a PDF, so let's close that and open up a PDF of the same article, and you can see it here. And so now when we do the Windows key Shift and T, it grays it down a little bit, and we're going to take this information and grab it, and then close this, come over here erase everything that's on there just and then we'll paste again and again it's the same article and it uh, actually did a better job from the PDF than it did from the JPEG but it does either so you can see you can uh, grab anything that's on the page and make text out of it something else I noticed that I could do is let's say you want a list of all of your icons that are on your desktop again Windows key shift and T and remember that T is for text. It's an easy way to learn remember it. So let's uh, let's just grab these. I heard the pop. That means it went into my clipboard. I'm going to delete this. And now I'm going to do a right mouse click and paste. And there are all of the items that are on the screen. And so I then have a list of all of the icons that I have on my desktop. So that's Text Extractor. Microsoft Power Toys Text Extractor and Screen Ruler. I'm Huey Poplock. Whoops. Hit the wrong button here. Uh, so that Text Extractor, I can see a lot of uses for that, much more so in the ruler. Uh, if you do uh, website design, you're doing presentations and so on, or you're putting together different graphics, you might find the ruler uh, uh, handy. Now, I had a ruler that I used for many years. It goes back, I purchased, it was a shareware uh, that came out in 1998. I must have purchased it because I'm, I have the, the full version and I can still use it. It runs, it's a it, it runs in the background. It's not, it doesn't have to be installed. It just it just will run from a folder. And uh, so I went looking for it, and I did find it. But I, when I did some searching, it hadn't been updated uh, since 
2008, but the version in 2008 was 3.2 and the version I was running was 1.1. So I downloaded 3.2 and it wouldn't run. And it was a share and it was the shareware package. Uh, so it, I would have had to, to pay, I think it's $25 now. It was 15 when I bought it. Uh, so it didn't work, but believe it or not, version 1.1 still runs. And I'd like to show that to you. I didn't put it in the video because I didn't think uh, it really fit in the video, but you might find it interesting and you might find a use for it. So let me go ahead and share my uh, screen again. Uh, this time I want to go back to the basic. I don't want to optimize and share. Whoops, cancel here. Okay, and we're going to uh, minimize this. And what I did is I made a shortcut out of it and put it on my desktop. So it is strictly a ruler. When I click it, it shows me how many pixels are across. I can make it larger. I can make it smaller. And I can also make it vertical or horizontal. And so if I want to find out how big something is, I just find the beginning of it. If I want to know how many pixels between uh, uh, between one thing and another, I come over here. I put my arrow right where the end of the the end of something is. When I do it, I see that it's uh, it it will tell me that it's three hundred and forty pixels. I don't know if you can see it up here, but wherever my my mouse is, wherever I'm moving that line it changes and tells me how many pixels wide it is. It doesn't do much, that's all it does, but it's a, it's a handy screen ruler. And uh, am I sharing my screen? Yes. Okay, my, oh, I, let's see what happened. I lost my Zoom, there we are. And I'll stop sharing. Okay, any comments or questions about uh, uh, a, a ruler. Does anyone have a use for a ruler, or do do you use one, or uh, do you actually put a ruler up on the screen? Uh, usually, that would be in inches. It wouldn't be in pixels. Could you refresh our memory about power tools, about where you find it, and if you have to update it to get those new features? Yeah, Power Tools is a is a Microsoft product. Yeah. It is free. Uh, do a search on it. I don't have the link. Uh, handy. Uh, perhaps somebody can look it up for me and put it in the chat box. Uh, but you download it and install it. When you install it, let me go ahead and share my screen here again. Uh, share my screen. And uh, I know I've, whoops, I've got a, a, I've got it on the desktop. I just click this. And it shows all the different power tools. So it, you don't have to install each one separately. They're all there. And then this tells you about it. And then it tells you what keystrokes will get you there. And this is editable. So if you want to change this from uh, Windows Shift C, you just change that and then type your keys and say, okay, uh, let's call it uh, Windows Shift Z, whoops, I got to hold them down, I guess. Windows, Shift, and Z, I can change it. And then I can save it, or if I cancel, it'll just keep what it, what it is. So you, if, if those, for whatever reason, those shortcuts uh, conflict with another program, you can make it easier or maybe easier to remember if you want. But it looks like a color picker is, a, is con control, uh, Shift, C, Text extractor is for text. You got control shift T. So it's relatively easy to remember them. There's a bunch of mouse utilities. Enable find my mouse. Uh, don't activate when the game mode is on. Uh, there's uh, some appearance and behavior that you can do. You can a uh, left button highlight color. Uh, right button, highlight color, so you can change. There's different things you can do for each of these, and all of these are free, and they're all part of the Power Toys that you download. And it was just we, up. Yes, I put the link in the text. I mean, I put the link in the chat, and the 
key that you use is not the control, but the windows shift. Yeah, I did. I said that incorrectly. I thought it. I thought windows and said control. You're right. Uh, let me go ahead and stop the share. So the, I've talked about power toys uh, here at the WinSig and and I think even on uh, Tech for Seniors before, but these uh, the ones that I talked about today are brand new. They just were released this past week. And, and Power Tools is is uh, version dot point six. I think it's six two or six three. So it's not even a one point zero, and it never has been. So it's all it's just test things that they allow you to use that uh, uh, Microsoft people have put together just to uh, extend the use of Windows. So there's some things to play around with when you don't have uh, something to do and you don't want to watch a video, you can play with uh, some of those toys and try them out. Any comments, questions before we move on? Thank you. Yeah, thanks for uh, reminding me to do that, Tony. I appreciate it. So let's uh, share the screen again. And bring back, oh, I didn't close it. I didn't. Let's close that. And the seniors guide, let's see, we need to probably. Uh, do this. Seniors guide to make Windows PC comfortable. Uh, are you a senior citizen who's having trouble using your Windows PC? Do you feel like it's too complicated that you can't do anything about it? Well, you're not alone. A lot of seniors feel this way. One of the things that uh, Ron and I recommend is uh, try a Chromebook. But if you want to stay with Windows, the modern technology can be very confusing for us older people. And it's, uh, it can be hard to keep up with the ever-changing landscape. It changes so often. But that keeps us coming back to these uh, WinSig meetings uh, every month, gives us some material. But there are some things you can do to make your Windows PC more comfortable to use. And so in this post, there are a couple of things they can you can do. Now, I don't recommend this, but you can disable your password or PIN on start, startup. One of the things that it can be very annoying for seniors is they have to enter the password or PIN every time you start your computer. Uh, if you're the only person who uses your computer, you can disable this setting so you don't have to put a password in every time. I don't recommend this. I don't think Bob G would either. Uh, but I, I use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do as I do, do as I say. There's nobody on this machine except me. <laughs> yeah, but if somebody breaks into your house and steals your computer, all they have to do is turn it on and they have access to everything. And so... <laughs> That's that's a good reason, but excuse me, a lot of you use laptops. This is not a good idea on a laptop. And why do I say that? Well, if you take your laptop anywhere and you happen to leave it, or you happen to go into the, uh, you're in a restaurant, you got the laptop on the table, and you uh, go into the men's room or the ladies' room, when you come out, it's gone. And all somebody has to do is open it up. And if you don't have a password, they're into everything. And you're more likely to have a laptop stolen than you are a desktop. And if you don't have a password on it, especially if you travel, if you're uh, a lot of people here in Florida are snowbirds, they go back and forth. So they take the same computer. So they have it on the road and then they have it at a different location. And it's really not a good idea not to have a password on it. Same thing with your phone. Hmm. Same thing with your phone. Uh, it's a good idea to have a password. It's a pain, but uh, if you can do it with a pin or you can do it with it recognizing your face or your fingerprint, uh, it, you really need to have some kind of protection. But it tells you how to do it if you want to get rid of that. Uh, make your mouse pointer larger. I don't know if you noticed, but look at my pointer. It's red and it's large. So there's several ways you can do this. But the best way is you go to the settings and the accessibility. 
So let's do that. We'll go to settings and accessibility, mouse pointer and touch. You can change it here. And then this last one is custom. If you go to the custom, you can change the color. You can choose another color. You can change the size. So you can make it really big. Or you can have it just your regular size. Uh, where I have it, I don't remember what number I had it on now, but we'll leave it at that. You can uh, have it inverted. You can have it black. It stays the same size. Yeah, in you Zoom, it doesn't change. It doesn't change. You're not seeing it? No, it changes for you, not for us, because Zoom is controlling it. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, you can change the size. <laughs> yep. Uh, you can change the color and a touch indicator. Let's see if this works or not. So if I uh, make it, no, I can't even make it work. So not sure what it does. But there are some settings there you can go in and you can play with. It. So it's it's if you want to go in and make it at least larger, go ahead and try it. I'm going to unmute myself here a minute. Let's see. Where would I do that? Okay. Uh, so that's an accessibility. So you can change it just by uh, changing the size with this slide. And you can change your text size. So that's all in ex under accessibility. You can make your icons appear larger. Under uh, In your file explorer, you can change your view and make it large icons, medium icons. And so what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and open up file explorer. And under view, you're going to have large icons. Or extra large, large, medium. Let me go into a documents folder. So there's a lot of some, there's a lot there. Uh, oh, come on. Okay. So you can. Uh, make them larger, smaller, extra large view, and then make them small. So it's just uh, an indicator of what it is. Or you can go to details. You can change what's in your file explorer in the view in various ways. Go by content. So and I like to keep my, most of the time I have it at details because that's what I was used to back in the DOS days. But there are some uh, folders when I go into them, I like them to be where it shows me the icons, uh, usually in large, especially if I'm working with a lot of pictures and I need to figure out which picture it is. Most of the time when pictures uh, are in a folder, they are image dot, uh, image one, two, three dot, uh, JPEG, image one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five, and so on. So I can't tell what they are by the names and by having the icons, it helps me discover what they are. Okay, and uh, whoops. Increase the size in browsers. Uh, with a, When you're in a browser, just hold the control key down, hit the plus or hit the minus to make it larger or smaller. And uh, uh, I, I frequently do that when I'm on a, when I'm looking at something uh, in a browser, uh, just go ahead and hit control plus to make it bigger. And if you make it too big, do a control minus, it makes it smaller. That works in some other programs, but not in everything. But it's, it's a good, if you want something a little bit bigger, sometimes try it and see if it works in that particular program that you're in. Or if you're on a website, it should work uh, all the time. Yui? Yes. You can also use the control 
button and your mouse wheel up and down. That's correct. Yes. Thank you. I don't do that. And I, and I keep forgetting about that, but you can do that. And if you uh, want to go back to the regular size, um, it'll show you in your top line on your browser, in your um, location line, it'll show you the um, current size. If you click on that size, it'll go back to 100% from whatever percentage you're at. Yeah, you'll see uh, in this example, it's on the screen. It'll show that it's 150%. You can do the uh, plus or minus, or you can do a reset and it'll put it back to wherever it started. But you can, if you, when you get it back to 100%, uh, you'll know that that's where it's, what it started out or what it should be. All right, so that's that article. You know, we talk about uh, keyboard shortcuts and I forget a lot of them. <clears throat> and sometimes I just don't, if you don't use them a lot, you forget to use them and then you forget what they are. But if you want a good list of them, this article is, and the link again is on my page, but it sh shows uh, Windows 11 shortcuts from A to Z and you'll see all of the Windows shortcuts and then all the control key shortcuts, control A, B, C, and so on what all of them are, the alt key shortcuts. So they're all there. Uh, I wouldn't try to learn all of them, but you might want to find one or two, remember them, use them, and then try a couple of more. Uh, but you'll, you'll find that the, the Windows H opens the Microsoft speech services or voice typing. And when I do that, let's see what's good. Let's see if it'll do it now. It tries to open it. Just a moment. And then I get an error message. And it basically tells me that uh, I'm not connected to the internet a lot of times when I do that. And I haven't figured out what causes that. I've done some searching. <clears throat> some other people use it and it, it brings that up and you, you can do the voice dictation very easily. And I have, a, for whatever reason on my system, I've got something that it doesn't like. It could be that you're using the microphone in Zoom. Yeah, but I've done it with the Zoom not on. I've done it with other things. I've done it. I did a reboot. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And then go directly into it. And I still get that. I still get an error message. And other people don't have that problem. And I'm not sure. I've got something that's interfering with it working and it, it just doesn't feel it sees the internet and I'm on the internet. <laughs> so I, I'm trying to do something on the internet. So, uh, you know, I am not sure what causes it. It's one of those things. Uh, uh, you have to understand that uh, people like myself and Bob G and, and Ron and, uh, and Mike and, and several of uh, the others here that, are are what some of you consider the uh, more knowledgeable people. We have issues the same as you do. So uh, uh, I think we do that so you feel comfortable having your issues. But uh, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, we've got to try to figure out what's wrong and sometimes we don't do it either. Uh, any comments, questions? Uh, I think I'm overwhelming you, or I put you to sleep. I'm not sure which. Huey? Yes. Um, I've been using some high visibility mouse pointers and uh, been using them since Windows, I don't know, three maybe, uh, whatever. It's a zip file I got way, 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 way back when. It does contain that little red mouse pointer that, that you're using, but it also has a waggly tail for the, the, the pointer. So you can't miss it when it's on your screen. At any rate, I can make that available uh, through the CFCS TechSig for our user group. And if you want to take that file, when I do post it and share it with the Sarasota group, you're welcome to do so. Thanks. Uh, and that's just a free utility you use? It's not even a utility. It's a collection of mouse cursors, oh. um, different colors, and 
of, you know, you can actually, you showed how, well, you were doing it from the settings, but you can actually go into the control panel under mouse and then settings and then mouse pointers and drill down. And then when you open it up, it shows you the mouse pointers that are actually included with Windows. And all you have to do is, is put, unzip the file that I'm gonna send, which probably has a couple hundred uh, mouse pointers of various sizes and shapes and colors and animated and not animated and so on. And I just found it, especially with a black background, the, the red mouse pointer with a waggly tail, I immediately can see where it is. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Okay, let's go back. And we close this one. Now, uh, Windows 11 version 22H2 may arrive sometime this month, next month, or maybe the month after. No one knows for sure. Uh, some of the things that uh, a lot of us were hoping for that have been in articles that they were going to include aren't included in in the first <clears throat> update there is not a 22 h1 there just wasn't a big update back in the springtime so if you have the most up-to-date version of windows 11 it's going to be one uh a version 21 h2 is the latest version that you should have on your computer and then you'll have updates after that, but uh, the uh, big version of it should be the 21H2. And so, uh, and they're talking about doing this about once a year now instead of twice a year. But there's also talk that there may be a, a Windows 12 somewhere down the road. So who knows? Microsoft doesn't tell us those things. And there's a lot of guessing. Microsoft adds a new sidebar to its Edge browser. <clears throat> I'm in Edge and I don't see it. And it does tell you that you can turn it on, but I tried to turn it on and I got a little bit of it. I got some of the news that would go in the side panel and the, and the little menus along the side, but I don't think it's fully implemented in my on my computer yet. And I'm not sure how they're doing it, how they're bringing it out. So I'm not using it. I don't, I don't normally use Edge except during this meeting, actually, uh, because I do like the immersive reader. Uh, but I don't, on a regular basis, I use Chrome. But I don't know whether I need that stuff on the side while I'm uh, browsing anyway, because I do have a second monitor and I can put those things on that monitor. Uh, we got some people waiting out. Uh, so I don't know if that's any benefit or not. I can't really show it to you because it, I really didn't get it to work properly. Uh, so some of you, if you're using Edge, uh, uh, are any of you using it and using that and have that sidebar? That's what I thought. No, nobody. How to add a keyboard shortcut to turn dark <clears throat> mode on and off. Up until I read this article, I haven't been using dark mode. And the reason I don't like dark mode is when I do screen captures to, to, to put in uh, uh, a demonstration or to show somebody, I don't like dark mode as well. I don't think you can see the information as well to share it with somebody else. But I have found that it is better on my eyes in the course of a day if I use the dark mode. But so I, I, I was going, it was, I was trying to turn it on and off and to do that through settings. It was a real pain. When I read this article, it talked about uh, a program called Easy Dark Mode Utility. And there's actually a link in the article. Let's see. Uh, somewhere's in this article, it, there's a link to it. You can schedule the light and dark modes in Windows 11. But again, sometimes I, you know, I work different times. Okay, here it is. Easy dark mode. I'm going to go ahead and 
right mouse click and tell it to open the new window. And this is where you go. And uh, let me copy and paste it into the chat box. But this is the program, and I did download it, and I did install it. And so let me show you what it does. So I am going to minimize this. Okay, I've got a, a folder here. Uh, I've got some things underneath here. And what I have is right here. Move my mouse over. It should give me a... Yeah, easy dark mode, and it says currently light. I click it. Do I have to? It changed it to dark mode, and it's changing everything on my computer to dark mode. Now you're seeing it live, make the changes. Now it's still doing it. Hope it doesn't screw it up and all of a sudden I disappear, but you can see the hourglass. I think you see the hourglass on my screen. So it's still working. I've got a lot of things going on in my computer, so it's taking a little bit longer than it normally does. But now we have everything is a dark mode. And I don't think you see that as easily as I do. And, uh, and if I do a screen capture and then try to print it out or put it in an article, I don't think you see it as well. So then I want to go back to light mode and I just click that button again. And it turns everything back to the light mode. Yeah, it takes a few seconds, but I think it's a lot handier than trying to go into settings and do it. I like having that app. It's still working. It's probably turning some things dark and yet, and, and then, oh, wait a minute, now I gotta backtrack and bring it back to light again. Come on. And there we go, and it's back to light mode again. Anyway, I think that's a, a neat utility, and uh, and I've been using it so I can go back and forth between a light and a dark mode, so I, I, I don't have to commit to having a dark mode all the time, and I don't have to commit to only having a light mode. Uh, any questions, comments? And that was for Windows 11 only? I don't know that. Um, let's go back to that website. It should tell us. Nope, both 10 and 11. Thank you. But... Uh, I'm just wondering, just, just kind of raise, those of you who got your cameras on, raise your hand. How many of you use the dark mode? No. Several of you. Okay. Uh, but I find, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just my, my position. When I see somebody who's done screen captures to demonstrate, I, I find it harder to, to read uh, when someone's got an article and they're using the the demonstration pictures in as a dark mode as opposed to light mode. I think it's harder to read. At least it is for me. I have a slight cataract and it seems to make it easier for me to read. In as as a dark mode? Yes. It's also much harder to print. Yeah, it's harder to print because it's going to get use a lot of black ink. Yep. And if you don't have as good a printer, it's not going to be as clear. Because when you when you print 
in the light mode, you, you don't print white, but when you print in the dark mode, you do print black. So it's using a lot more ink that way too. Okay, let's go back to uh, my list. And so anyway, that's that article on how to create a keyboard shortcuts to enable and disable dark mode in Windows 11. I don't even use a, uh, a keyboard shortcut. I just, I click on the, on the little icon. Next article is about OneDrive. There's been several articles about OneDrive uh, recently. Uh, I believe it was uh, Bill James did a, a, a nice article on Tech for Seniors on OneDrive, and I've seen some others. So I'm not going to get into this too much. But if you, again, aren't too sure what one, OneDrive is, you might want to take a look at this. And here's another article, OneDrive, to get a new web app for its 15th anniversary. So there. <clears throat> so if you've finally learned how to use OneDrive and what it is in the last couple of months, now it's going to change again because they're going to change so the app. They do that to us all the time. And again, uh, now OneDrive's new homepage will help you find files. So there's several articles on OneDrive in this month's listing. I talked about portable apps uh, a few meetings ago. Uh, if you don't know what portable apps are, uh, you might want to read this article. They're, they're apps that you can run from a thumb drive. You don't have to install them. You can put them in, in, in a folder and just run it from the folder again. You don't have to install. And uh, they've got eight uh, Windows apps for your system admin toolkit. Uh, one of them is TFTPD Portable, and uh, the bare uh, basics in this article, it uh, sports a wide range of connection types, including uh, TFTP, and even comes with the full functional client interface, uh, and you can download it just by clicking the link there. Wireshark Portable <clears throat> is an esteemed network analyzer. So these are for some of the advanced people online right now. Uh, Angry IP Scanner Portable, uh, follow-up on Wireshark's Shark's broad network analyst. Angry IP Scanner will let you scan specific IP ranges as well as their ports. This is stuff that most of us don't use, but if you're uh, a troubleshooter or you're a little bit more advanced than most of us, uh, these are tools that you might want to have in your arsenal. Uh, so uh, tight VNC viewer portable, a reg scanner to scan your uh, your uh, registry. And, and if you need to get the product key, how to do that, and a blue screen view uh, is a fantastic tool to use when you want to analyze a mini dump files created during a blue screen of death. So again, these are advanced items, but they are all portable utilities that you can carry on a thumb drive and just plug them in and, and use them on a computer uh, if you're working on, on somebody else's computer or on your own. Uh, I know, I think it was Bob uh, introduced us to this uh, or Ron, I can't remember who. Uh, Shift Enter is a secret shortcut everyone should know. That sometimes you, if you're typing in uh, the chat box and you need a second line, if you hit enter, it activates the chat and sends it. Well, if you want to have something go to the next line, like a new sentence or a new paragraph, if you uh, uh, if you hold the shift key down and hit enter, it will go to the next line. You're able to finish your second sentence and then hit send. And so it looks better in the uh, chat box that way. And there's other places where you can use that as well. It's handy even in Microsoft Word. I did a video on that one. Yeah, I thought you did. Yeah, and, and that's how I learned about it. When I saw this article, I wanted to make sure that I brought it to everyone's attention. 
Bob, you've done a video on most of what we talk about. <laughs> um, this article, I think we, we kind of touched on it uh, last month, I think. I know I, 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 I talked about it somewhere. Maybe it was in one of my articles in the uh, Tech for Senior newsletter. Uh, but uh, 12 things you must do with a brand new laptop. You buy a new laptop, there are certain things you ought to do before you start using it. And one of the things, of course, is update the operating system. The first thing you want to do when you get any kind of computer is check to see if there's an update to the operating system and anything else that's installed on it and get those updated first. Remove any bloatware. If you buy a computer these days, uh, 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 you know, any of the brands, you go into Best Buy or any of the other places, you buy a computer, an HP, Lenovo, they all make money by selling the rights of companies to install so software on your computer. Sometimes it's a, it's a freebie that entices you to update to their premium. Uh, sometimes it's a 10-day trial version uh, or a 30-day trial version or, or whatever. But you want to remove most of those. You don't need them. You don't want them. And you want to do that as soon as you get the computer. Get, get them off of there before they start leaving little trails of stuff all over your computer. Windows itself comes bloated with all kinds of stuff. The yep. operating system itself. Uh, review your antivirus software. Uh, Microsoft, of course, comes with Microsoft Defender. Uh, but uh, you might want to look to see and look into... Uh, uh, in the case of Bob, Avast, or some of the other antivirus programs that you might prefer to have on your system. And make sure you uninstall the McAfee if that's not what you're going to use and it came on your computer. You want to make sure not only do you uninstall it, but you find the uninstaller, usually on McAfee's website, uh, to make sure you get all the bits and pieces and parts out as well. You want to configure any anti-theft tools. Uh, uh, you want to configure Find My Device uh, uh, and, and, and the privacy settings and so on. So you want to make sure that you do that when you first get the computer. And then you need to go back and review them on occasion because sometimes updates reset those on you. Optimize your laptop's power settings. Some of you have never looked at your power settings and you really need to take a look at it. This article will tell you how to, uh, how to uh, take a look at that and then you might want to change. Uh, I, I know I like to have, if, if mine's plugged in, sometimes I like to have it stay on a lot longer than if it's not plugged in. And you can, with a laptop, you can tell it, okay, if, it's, if, if there's power, uh, leave it for two hours or or have it never shut off. And if it's on battery, then I want it to shut down after 30 minutes of non-use. So if you just get up and walk away from it after about 30 minutes, it just, it'll put itself to sleep or it will shut off depending on what you set it at as well. Uh, configure some automated backups, uh, set up any cloud storage syncing. For those of you who have uh, Microsoft products, uh, you might want to uh, uh, sync to OneDrive and you want to learn about that and what you do and how to do it and then have your system do it. So you're backing up a lot of your data automatically uh, using uh, OneDrive or any other kind of uh, cloud storage or uh, using syncing. And then minimize the risk of heat damage. We we're talking about that. Before, uh, laptops are more susceptible to heat than any other type of computer. Desktop cases are large enough for good ventilation, and tablets don't have to worry uh, much about dust buildup. Uh, meanwhile, many laptops have poor air circulation and lots of spots for dust to accumulate. Plus, it's easier to put them in a heat building situ uh, situation. Uh, and, and, and laptops, too. They say laptop, you put it on your lap. A lot, of, a lot of you put them on your bed or on the couch. Well, a lot of times the airflow is underneath or along the edges where they get covered when you do that. 
And you want to make sure you're not doing that. So sometimes having some kind of a little stand for it. And somebody put in uh, uh, in the chat notes earlier that they have a, a stand that's got a fan in it. And uh, that's a, usually a USB activated fan. So you can just plug it in to a USB port on your laptop and it will circulate the air underneath your laptop while you're using it. Not a bad idea. Uh, customize your system settings and know what to install on a new laptop. And there's, uh, and then, you know, are you using a VPN? And you might want to consider that. I don't use one. Uh, and I know some people that use them all the time. Uh, put your old laptops to use. Uh, there's some uh, an article about a creative way to, to do that. And that's the end of that article. Uh, I just put a video that? together on how to recycle your old equipment. Don't yes, throw it out, great. just repurpose it. Yes, and a great video. And I think we're showing it tomorrow in Tech yes. So let me find my little menu. I slid it over to the other screen and it keeps disappearing. So I'll stop the share. And we're about ready to conclude the WinSig and then turn it over to Stan for the CFCS meeting. So any final comments, questions? Any Put a comments? link in the chat. If you're interested in removing your old antivirus, it has all the popular ones listed. So you can go directly to their removal tools and not have to go spend an hour trying to find it. And, and, and Bob, uh, if you would tell people why they might want to do that. Well, if you get a new laptop or computer, they always come with trial versions. And when the trial version ends, it doesn't remove that antivirus. And your antivirus has to have access to every part of your computer. So it's a very invasive product. It has to be in order to do its job. And when you simply use the window tool to remove it, you only remove a very small part of the program. The rest of it gets removed by using the tool provided by the particular antivirus company. And that removes all the other stuff, which can interfere with lots of things if you don't do it. Yep. Great. And, th and thanks for that link for that. Any other comments or questions from anybody? All right, I am going to uh, do one more share here. This has been the Central Florida Computer Society and Sarasota Technology User Group Windows SIG or WinSIG for Sunday, September 11th, 2022. I'm Huey Poplock. Thanks for joining us. And to share, I'm going to stop the recording.